And welcome back here. This is Sean Tiger and Ian Noanu. Um, we are finalizing our holiday prep webinar series here for you today. We're going to be talking about the most important part, returns. We're going to be talking about how to create an RMA, how to manage and receive that RMA, and also creating returns that don't need an RMA. Let's get started. Now here we are in MOM. We're going to be looking into the return functionality within the MOM system. So. Before we get into any settings, I do want to remind you guys that before we set any of these settings or go through the different procedures we're going to go through, make sure you define those procedures and policies on your side so that way all the different resources you have are on the same page as far as how to process returns or how to take returns. So without to do, without further ado, we're going to go into the global parameters, uh, which is where we set our return codes. So within there, you have the return codes. You can see we have a variety of different returns. The main thing to note here is that the return to inventory. So if it's marked yes, uh, it will return to inventory. If it's marked no, it's not going to be returned. And that is really just handled by a checkbox right here. So if you check that, it's going to be a yes. If you uncheck it, it's going to be a no. So once you s save out of the global parameters, we're going to go into an existing client and see one of their shipped orders, and we're going to return one of them. So under my record here, let me um, open up an order. You can see I have two products that have been shipped. Um, well, I'm going to go through the what we call a simple return. It gives you a flexibility where you can actually do the return on the fly. So within the order itself, you can hit the icon for return, or you can actually do it on the item, and you can do also return item. So if we hit that icon or go to the menu, you can then choose a return. We also offer an exchange if you want to do an exchange, but we're going to do a return here. We're going to choose a reason code why we're returning and then you can see the return is automatically added to the order. Now at this point, the system knows that there's a return, so you can see since I paid by credit card, it's automatically going to want to refund that value of that return. If you want to return, do a simple return via here, you can also put a negative value in shipping if you want to re refund that. Uh, most importantly, you want to make sure you process your return uh, by quick printing it, so that way there's an invoice part of the return. And that's important because it doesn't actually record the inventory back into the bin until it's actually been processed fully. So you can see once it's B here, it's just invoice part B, now the particular extra large t-shirt is now put back to bin and it's ready to be resold again. And then I'm go I can go ahead and approve the refund right here. So that's what we call a simple return. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take another order and um, do what we call an RMA. So an RMA is much less, it's more rigid, less flexible, but it's more um, standard as far as make sure that everything, uh, there's a proper procedure in place to make sure the returns are done correctly. So under order edits, there is a return merchandise authorization. Um, when you choose that, it tells you you want to do a new RMA. You're going to put your quantity you want to return, the reason code like we saw. So we're going to pick one. And then here, you can put an expiration date. You can do more uh, a refund on the shipping. And then you can also put any information for CSR as to what to look for. If there's a, this is a special case, this is a one-time thing, you can put that information here so that it can be reviewed next time. So notes to be reviewed. And you can save that. So this RMA number is then given to the end client so that they can refer to that when they return their product. So we save out of the order, and a couple of days goes by, or a week, however long it takes to get the items back to the warehouse. You just simply put the RMA number. So this would be the your warehouse guy, your receiving guy, whoever's receiving returns in your company. You'd put in the RMA number that was referred to. You can see it brings it up right here, and any notes that was given, and you can hit process. Once you process that, this brings you back to the order screen. And then it goes back to the same process. You would quick print it so that the inventory is then put back to the, the bins uh, available to sell again. Or if it's do not return to inventory, it doesn't inflate the bins. So once you uh, print that out, there's a part B. Now this is paid by term, so now you can, I can issue a check via my uh, pay, apply payment screen, or I can also refund a credit card but it's really up to your preference and how you want to do the refund now. So now there is a negative charge on this particular order. You can see 
there is a negative 1299 invoice so that we're going to have to refund this particular client 1299 so those are the two different returns we have in in mom we we'll go into some of the advantages of each right i mean again i mentioned that the simple return we saw initially was more flexible because you do it on the fly versus the more rigid uh, rma but with the RMAs, you have more reporting capabilities. Um, over here, we have the RMA reports, so you can actually see what is coming back. So it's more visibility for you. Um, so if you do it with the RMA process, you get more visibility with what actually what's coming back, what, st what stock item, how many are completed, and things like that. So you have a reporting side of it that you don't really get if you do a simple return. So those are the different returns that you can do within MOM. And ensure that you set up these properly according to your policies so that way um, when the return season comes you are ready for it and you have procedures in place outside and inside the mob system uh, with that said I'm gonna give this back to Sean so that was right here how to handle and manage returns within freestyle multi-channel order manager mom for sure making sure that you have an easier way to process manage and handle and view all your returns that may happen during this holiday season one thing to stress and one thing to note here it's very important to show your team everything that may be going on and changes that you have in your procedures you can view about this topic and many more on freestylesolutions.com i'm sean taggart he was ian Awano. thanks for joining us